The foundation of the finished work of Christ produced Pentecost where we could have Passover, where the Holy Spirit could come and bring in a new covenant and a new dispensation. This started with the finished work of Christ. As we study this new covenant, this new dispensation of grace, the foundation of the gospel, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3.10, is the message of grace. So as we study this, we ask that you join us, pick up your Bible, I'll get you a notepad, take down the scriptures, and then after the study is over, prayerfully consider and ask the Holy Spirit to give you additional illumination and revelation on, your, on the word that had just been presented. Tonight, Leroy continues with his series, Patchwork Gospel. New Covenant is about position, about believing. You know, that's the only thing that matters. Does my belief associate me with my position in Christ or does my belief associate me with some performance that I need to do some prerequisite that I have to do to receive or something that I have to pay back once God has given to me. God's grace to us is for us and it is in us. And it's working through us and has absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to do with our obedience or our faithfulness, and it's not even our faith because it's his faith. Remember, Hebrews 12, 2 says, it is, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. So he is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and Omega. It's not faith that I generate, but he is the author of that faith. And he's a finisher. Galatians 2.20, it's in, uh, it says, it is the faith of Jesus. Again, if it's about what I can do or what I have to do, then how can it be called grace? If I've got any conditions before or after, how can it be called grace? Some people will say, well, stop there because uh, it's my faith. Uh, haven't you ever heard of the, of the lady <clears throat> that bathed Jesus' feet? Haven't you heard about her washing his feet with her tears? Haven't you heard about her spending a year's wages on the perfume that uh, she poured on his feet and anointed him? Haven't you heard that Jesus told her, her faith has made her whole. Yes, I have. Remember, Hebrews 9.15 says that we must learn to rightly divide the word. Question, when did that event happen? When did that event happen? Well, it's in the Gospels. True. That's where it's at. But when did it happen? It happened when Jesus was on the earth. Was he still alive? Yes. What did we say about Christ? He was born under the old covenant. He grew up under the old covenant. He performed under the old covenant so he could keep the old covenant so that we would not have to. He died as a wage of sin. So he, him telling her, her faith has made her whole, 
is completely true for when that scripture was written. Now, it is his faith because this was spoken under a performance-driven covenant. was spoken under the Mosaic covenant and like we said, we can either have pedigree, performance, or position. She could not be in Christ because he hadn't gone to the cross. She couldn't be in Christ because the Holy Spirit hadn't come. Because God puts us in Christ, according to Romans 6, 3 through 5, when we believe and then by him putting us in Christ, we were in him when he died you can say we were co-crucified we were co-buried if I'm in him I'm in him we were co-resurrected and I am co-seated with Christ at his right hand so again his position his position his position see a lot of people are going to church under their my gospel. They're going to church. A lot of people are in church. And a lot of people are attending church. <clears throat> but not many people are being the church. That's what God calls us to do. Does your gospel that you have now compel you to go to church? to be in church, to attend church, to do things, to do this, to perform this, that, and the other? Or are you being the church? If you're being the church, you go not because of performance, but to be with fellow believers to expand the kingdom and to take back what the enemy has stolen. Well, if God wants us to have that, he'll, he'll just give it to us. Don't use that mentality and that thinking. God works through this vessel that came from Adam. And it is an imperfect vessel. But that is what he has chosen to work through, is this crack pot of a vessel that came from Adam. And he daily fills us with his spirit because it just keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. And we need to transition from going to church to being the church. Not only do people go to church, they are in church and attend church, a lot of people are just church goers. Uh, you know, and that's people who are not do leavers or believers. They think and believe that God owes them something. So many, many people go to church for all the wrong reasons. They have no intention, none whatsoever, of allowing the gospel to change their life or to even have a relationship with the Father. They will stand up and dispute that to your face but their continuous action and the continuous doing of wrong things and the continuous believing of wrong things shows that they have no intention of allowing the word of God to change them they have no intention of even or really or even a desire for a life change. People have said under this message of grace and have not allowed the world to change their thinking one bit, not even a little. Oh, they would like God to do something to a degree, but they do not want him to purchase them from the auction block of sin because if he purchases us from the auction block of sin and pays the debt that we owe, then he bought us and he owns us. We are his. That means 
that control is no longer me, but the control of my life comes from him. And people do not want to submit control by faith to someone they cannot see. And the real reason of that, because they have no conversation with them. You know, the word also says, my sheep know my voice. <clears throat> well, God's never spoken to me. Well, he's there. He is speaking. You may have your radio on the wrong channel, and you may not like the song he's singing, but he is speaking if he's in you. So I would see what he wanted me to hear. Meaning I would comprehend what he wanted me to hear. I would comprehend his desire to live his life through me. So why is the new covenant gospel? Why is God's gospel? good news because it's the answer to the problem alright so what's the problem the problem is no one and I mean no one deserves to go to heaven or to receive anything from God well I have you know I've done this and I've done that I'm a Christian so therefore I deserve to go not really the Jews don't deserve to go to heaven. The Christians don't deserve to go to heaven. See, if you think and your gospel says by what I believe and what I do, that makes me worthy. And therefore, by me being worthy, I am deserving to go to heaven then we need to change our gospel I know I had to change mine worthy means deserving and if my gospel has prerequisites conditions either before or after receiving anything from God and therefore I am trampling underfoot the blood of Christ there's no way that you can come up with a scenario that says you are worthy. The only way that we get to heaven is by grace. Pure and simple. It's by the great I am. It's by that and that alone, it is not by that God owes me this or he owes me that. I know people that are in church that are mad because God didn't take care of this. He didn't take care of that. So I'm going to take care of it myself. I know people that are out of church because they got mad with God because he didn't do this. He didn't do that. They didn't. He didn't do what they thought he ought to do. Or what he did was in the wrong way. See, their gospel was based on their preconceived notion without a revelation of God's gospel. And if we don't have a revelation of God's gospel, then we're not going to have any gospel at all. Paul would say in Galatians 1 that if it's not God's gospel, then it's another gospel which is re in reality no gospel at all. And that is a terrible, terrible place to be in. Thank you for watching Not Without Blood. We appreciate your participation and uh, studying God's Word with us to, together on, on a nightly basis. 
We also would like to invite you to our Emmaus Road Bible Study that we have each and every Thursday morning from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. The Emmaus Road Bible Study is in the Fellowship Hall of Grace River Community Church. It is located at 2018 Cleveland Avenue Southwest in Decatur, Alabama. This will be a non-denominational uh, study and you will have the freedom to ask questions and to give input. Hope you can join us uh, as we together can grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. I want to pull up a scripture on the, on the screen and it's going to be Proverbs 29, 18. And it says, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, if you look up Proverbs 29, 18, you will, and, and go to your Greek Hebrew dictionary or go to your Strong's Concordance. And as we've always said, if you're going to study the word, you need a strong Concordance to, to look at the Greek or get you a uh, Young's literal translation of the Bible. That helps. Those two things are to me necessary to study uh, the word uh, it says where there is no vision the people perish well the word vision there is revelation it means revelation <clears throat> the word perish means naked so I start out my Christian life and my journey begins, and really, I'm naked. You know, God has done away with all my sins. He justified me. He has made me whole. He has sanctified me. So, you know, I am naked before God as I should be. Remember, go back to the garden and Adam and Eve were naked when they had not sinned. And then as soon as sin came into their life, they not only had sin consciousness, they had self-consciousness. So what did they do? They essentially, you know, I'm going to use this because this is what they did. You know, they grabbed a fig leaf. Well, in my patchwork gospel, if I uh, sin, what am I going to do? I'm going to grab my gospel and I'm going to cover myself up. You know, I, I can't stay naked for God. He ain't never seen me naked before. Oh, no, that's kind of crazy. So, I get born again. And I'm pure before God. Without a vision or without revelation of what? Without revelation of God's gospel. Without the revelation of God's gospel, what's going to happen to me? I will perish. No ifs, ands, buts about it. See, I'm naked. But he says, without revelation, I'm going to perish. I'm either going to cover myself up with the messed up, pieced together, patchwork gospel, or I'm going to turn to God and I'm going to say, God, the Bible says the only way to receive the truth of your gospel is that it has to come to me by revelation. Please show me the truth of your word. I desire it and I want the Holy Spirit to reveal it 
to my spirit. I want the spirit of God to live his life out through me. I want to know you. See, if I've covered myself with his gospel, I'm not concerned with my sin because the atonement in his blood has taken care of it. I don't have to go do something to pay retribution for my sin because when I have that type of gospel I am trampling underfoot the blood of the lamb that's the only way you can get it when I feel like that I am condemned Again, I do something wrong. And oh, I can't come into God's presence for at least two or three weeks. I've got to do this and I need to do that. I probably need to fast several days and then I need to approach with little baby steps because I, I know he's mad and I know he's going to get me. And uh, I need, uh, I wait at least two or three weeks and then maybe I can start crawling back into his presence. Again, that's hogwash. Word says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because he's got your back. He's already atoned for what we are trying to atone for. That that you are trying to do to get back in his favor is not part of his gospel. It can't be. Never will be, never was. I am either going to cover myself with my gospel or I'm going to put on his robe of righteousness. And I'm going to cover myself with his presence. When I do that and I understand that I'm in Christ, do you think Christ has a sin issue? Do you think Christ, and is it part of your gospel that Christ has a sin issue in his life and he has to do something to persuade the Father to forgive him? Think not. Well, I am in Christ. You are in Christ. He is in me. The atonement took the sin issue. John would say, Behold the Lamb of God in John 1.29 that, that takes away the sins of the world. They've been taken away. See, we have to have the same revelation in its entirety that Peter had. Peter had the revelation that thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Yes. Paul gets the revelation of what that meant. Yes, he was the Christ. He was the Son of God that would be the Christ, the anointed one. Paul's revelation, all right, what does that mean to Christians? What does that mean to the body of Christ? Again, if we can understand and have a revelation of what it means for Christ in me and me in Christ, <clears throat> it would solve the problems of the modern day church there would not be division because Christ is not divided there would not be any issues between believers because we would all be hearing the same message the same way from the same source 
but because we're not, but because we all have our own man-made gospel that we get defensive when anybody tells us that the gospel that I have is man-made or the gospel that I have that I've spent 40 years of my life perfecting and making it look good and making it presentable and that I'm proud of when people tell me that that gospel may not be the gospel I need people get real defensive really really quick and get really mad really really quick but don't get upset with me I am only a messenger go to the word go to the Holy Spirit God I don't understand any of this that I've just heard is this dude completely off his rocker or is he on the train tracks going straight ahead as true as an arrow let the Spirit of God in you control you. Only when we are all hearing the same voice from the same source will we all have the same walk and worshiping the same true God. I hope you will pray about what you've heard so far on this study. We have um, many, uh, several more programs that will go along with it. Again, we ask you to pray for the ministry as we go forward with several new and different outlets to uh, uh, put the message uh, to a larger footprint and reach additional peoples. <clears throat> we covet your prayers. We desire them. We ask that uh, you continue to pray for us to receive more revelation of the word of God that we again can bring them to you uh, as we uh, receive them ourselves it's not something we're going to hold on or hide it's something we're going to dispense <clears throat> to the body of Christ it, uh, what God does for you is always for others so never un never think that it is something you're just to hold on to, grab hold to <clears throat> and never share or give to others. But it's whatever he does for you is always for others. Just look at his examples. What he did was not for himself but it was for <clears throat> others. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for watching uh, Not Without Blood. Not Without Blood has been brought to you by the donations of the Crossway Ministry Sponsors. If you'd like to join our sponsors in support of our ministry, contact us at 256-227-5777. We invite you to join us each and every study to grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Once again, that number is 256-227-5777.